to stay. What the book is telling us, nobody seems to know. I mean, there are millions of theories, almost as many theories as people who visit it. It would appear to be that he did have a message of some kind. Where he would get it and where he got his knowledge, we don't know. All of this seems mysterious enough, but now the mystery of Roslyn has been added to by a series of bizarre UFO sightings. Scottish ufologist Ron Halliday has documented most of them. Roslyn Chapel has you know, a long history of uh, being some kind of mystic spot. I mean, certainly there have been UFO sightings in the area, you know, over the years. Triangular-shaped objects, disc-shaped objects, objects hovering in the sky, objects on the ground, and, of course, in addition, people have claimed to have seen alien entities. Some people have since suggested that extraterrestrials might have been responsible for certain inexplicable things inside the chapel. Like the carvings of American maize, apparently etched into the walls before America was discovered. And the vines that wrap themselves around the apprentice pillar, a seemingly perfect representation of the double helix of DNA. Can super advanced aliens have given William Sinclair the knowledge from the future to leave these messages? Outrageous idea? Yeah, but maybe not outrageous enough. For some locals are convinced that something even more potent than the Holy Grail is buried at the chapel. The gateway to another dimension used by aliens. And where did they get this idea? Well, from almost the first time people began to see UFOs and aliens, they said they saw them most around buildings with rich histories and mystical pasts. Structures like the pyramids of Egypt, Stonehenge in England, and now add to that Scotland's Roslyn Chapel. According to some, all these ancient sites are gateways to other parallel dimensions. And this would explain why sightings are concentrated around these sacred places. It's possible that the people in the past recognised that particular site which formed a mystic link with other dimensions, other worlds, other things, and you know, that is one of the reasons why Roslyn Chapel is built at that particular spot. Roslyn Lake and other site out in West Lothian near Bonnie Bridge, I think that, that, that these sites have been used for um, travelling between dimensions and worlds. And against all the odds, the experts we asked to find the gateway at Roslyn said they'd done just that. All of a sudden I started coming up off the floor, I swear to God. If you used your hands, you could actually feel where the doorway was, where it started and where it ended. Is it a portal through to another dimension? Who knows? So, is there an alien portal in Roslyn? And if there is, could the chapel's mysterious code be the way to open it? According to some spooky people we're about to meet, the code was given to the Scots 500 years ago by super sophisticated extraterrestrial beings. So, let's test this theory. The obvious place to look for this alien gateway to another galaxy is inside Roslyn Chapel itself and the obvious people to investigate are the top local paranormal investigators. They're Brian Allen and mystics Anne-Marie Snedden and Jim Lochhead. We sent them into Roslyn for three hours to see if they could spot any strange phenomena. They scoured every nook and cranny and right enough strange phenomena was exactly what they found. One of, the, one of the guides there, he, had, he asked me to stand on this particular flagstone in, in the crypt. And it, it was quite incredible because, because I, I could actually feel under my feet, I could feel this undulation, almost as if you were standing on, 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 
on a rubber mat of some kind that was being pushed from underneath it. It was an incredible sensation. And the guy told me, he asked me what I was feeling, and I told him, and he said, well, it, not surprising, he says, because everybody that, that stands on the spot feels exactly the same thing. It was like walking in a ship up and down, but a pleasant, rolling feeling within you. Hard to describe. You had to hold on. It wasn't going sideways, just going straight in front of you, up and down. My feet were coming up off the floor. It was as if something was my heels, like pushing from my heels and pushing me up off the floor, and I stumbled forward. Brian Allen and his friends had, so they say, quite literally stumbled across the portal. If you used your hands, you could actually feel where the doorway was, where it started and where it ended, and it was just like a big tube. And it's got a, an actual door on it, which, when you put your hands on it, shifts slightly, and you can actually feel that movement. Bear with them. For not only did they sense the portal itself, they even have a cool theory as to how to unlock it. The answer, they say, is in the chapel itself. I do believe that there is a doorway, a genuine doorway, w within Rosalind Chapel. And I believe that the, that the secret to unlocking this doorway exists also in the chapel. It's on display, it's there for people with eyes to see, the only problem is decoding it. Jutting from the ceiling of the southwestern end of the chapel are a series of patterned cubes. Their purpose has, for centuries, mystified visitors. But now, Brian Allen believes he has decoded them. They are the way, he says, to opening the portal. I believe that the key to this is, is encapsulated in those cubes. The facets of these cubes, all the different designs, some, some are repeated, some are different, some are unique, but, but it, it reads very like a musical score. I think that they, that they can be reproduced using what are called Schladni patterns, Schladni patterns. The famous experiments made by German scientist Ernst Schladni, one of the earliest recorded methods of observing sound waves. We asked Edinburgh University's professor of acoustics to help us test the theory. Well, we've got a square plate here which is clamped at the middle but free to vibrate round the edges. And you can set it into vibration in a number of different ways, but the classic way is to take a violin-like bow and bow it at the edge. You can make the patterns visible by sprinkling salt or sand onto the plate. And then when you bow it, the salt gets thrown up where the plate is vibrating strongly, and you'll see a pattern. So is it possible, Professor, that our psychic is right and the patterns in the stonework of Roslyn Church might be the patterns of sound waves like these? Well, yes, you could do that. I mean, as I say, if you just take one note and bow it, then you can listen to the pitch, check what it is on the piano and write it down, then find another pattern.